It's really hard to tell. Oh, he hit me. All right guys, so it's time to take another whack at the Flutog airplane. This is gonna be our third time competing, and if you guys have been following along with us, we had the opportunity to build what we call a prototype or a small scale project uh, to basically test out a new design. But after a lot of time reflecting and after thinking like, how do we really wanna take on this project? We realized there's some pretty key flaws that we especially experienced in our last time we competed in the Flutog that we simply don't wanna repeat again. <laughs> So on back to the drawing board, I have a new idea, and not only do I think it's gonna be great, but I think it has the potential to break some major records. So you guys have probably seen, as you follow along with us, we take a lot of our inspiration uh, from aviation, from history, from community members, and just what's going on today. There are two iconic ultralights that fly incredibly slow that are actually biplanes. One is the Bloop, and one is the Dingo. Both of these airplanes have incredibly light wing loading, slow flight characteristics, are incredibly stable, and very, very cool looking. I think in this application, we're gonna look more at a biplane this time. My original goal with both a canard and also something like the aerodrome was to have as much wing surface as possible to create and lift. The cool thing about the biplane is it gives you exactly that. It gives you two wings, a more conventional way to control it, more stability. Now we're limited to a wingspan of only about 21 feet. The neat thing about the biplane is we'll have two wings at 20 feet. That gives us a 40 foot technical wingspan of create and lift. I'm gonna go ahead and take the inspiration from both the Bloop and the Dingo. I'm gonna design my own aircraft here, and then we're gonna see how it glides. All right, so we're going through a bunch of the, you know, the different, because they try to mitigate as much risk as possible with the Fluke Dog. So they're working on like how high can it be, how long can the craft be, so we're kind of working through that from the design perspective, right? Ooh, yeah. Oh, the upside down. I'm like just that. thinking of it as too tall, I just turned upside down. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. So yeah, uh, and that's that's kind of the unknown here is there's craft body and then there's yes. craft length. Yes, so right now it's like 16 feet in length, but it says that the craft body 10 foot max, whether that is the fuselage and then the tail is separate, I'm not sure, I gotta check with them on that. The width of the wings though is 22 feet max. We can go to 22 feet. Do you realize how, I mean this, I thought it was 16 foot wingspan, so this is, in scale, this would be 16 feet. Yes. That so means we, can, we, we could add arguably two feet on each side, right? I mean, actually, three, two and a half feet on each side. Yeah, Whoa. correct. That's a lot. That'd be awesome. One thing I definitely wanted to do, rather than having a conventional tail, when we test this, I'm gonna test it with a V-tail, because we don't need to worry about direction, we just need to have pitch. Right, correct. And so my thought is, is if Michael's up here and we have, we can do a pull-pull cable or even a push rod if we have to back here, a V-tail is real easy to have pitch control. Right. So we could have pitch control, we'd have the lateral stability, the dihedral will be working towards us. And it's lighter and has less drag. Yep, less, all, all the above. And all the good things. Tail heaviness is, <laughs> seems like a common thing that plagues us a lot of times, so I think that would keep it real simple. Well, in the meantime, I'm gonna put the tail on, I'm gonna get the center of gravity established, finish this up. We're gonna glide it and, uh, and see how it glides and then try to calculate what speed would this need to go to glide while well, understanding the fact that when you go bigger, everything works in your favor better. You know, okay. you, you double the wingspan, you quadruple the wing surface kind of mentality. So, you know, uh, even if this goes a little bit faster than normal, not the end of the world. We're just looking for how stable it is, how well it glides. And uh, and then we gotta start with the four airfoils. Boom, let's get it. <coughs> All right. Ready? Whoa! That, was that was awesome! That was no control towards the end. So it was flying and then at the end I just flared just a little bit. One more time. That, I like that. I think this could be a kit. You put a motor on the back oh, right here. You, you can even extend that boom forward and put a motor just right where the, uh, in the front there too. Where yeah. the dog is. Yep, that was good. Ready? <laughs> Let's go! That's awesome! All right, this will be available on the store tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I just realized though, now that we can actually get decent glides, we can measure the room. In a, in a perfect situation and then do our calculations of speed from there. So yeah. basically it crosses 15 feet in a second and we can work backwards from that. That is that is my only fear is, you know, that we're having to throw pretty hard, but it does yeah. glide real nice once we get that speed. Yeah. Pushing it off of a cliff, we're not going to get a lot of speed. No. <laughs> well, and that's where, that's but, where we're working in small yeah, scale. Yeah, when it goes into a bigger scale, then it needs less speed. Yeah, where's, where's the scale right now, matter of fact? 
Well, we'll lay it. We'll lay it. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> All right, so the glide test went pretty good. We were even able to get it gliding inside the room here. Uh, this morning we have some pretty calm weather and uh, Dave brought up some really good points. The amount of drag and the amount of lift. Lift is awesome. Drag was also really, really bad. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna down the wings, but before I do, Dave's gonna to toss this off the balcony for me. We're gonna glide it down and see how it performs and basically dead wind with a longer glide slope. Again, as we size this different, the whole lift and the drag and stuff is gonna change, but at least we have a benchmark and something that's a proof of concept. So we're gonna throw it off the balcony. I'll either have some repairs to do or I'll be thinning out the wings. All right, Dave, so you're gonna launch it for me. Yeah. Chase and Jason is going to, I'm not Chase and Jason, Miller time. <laughs> yeah, Miller time. There's too many Jasons in my life. <laughs> Uh, Jason's gonna help us out. Miller time when he goes by. Uh, he's uh, one of the flight crew. You're gonna record? Hopefully. All right, here you go. Noah's, Noah's not here today. All right, do me a favor. Uh, I want to go that way because I don't want to get anywhere near that. I, I, I agree. You're gonna have to give me a decent launch. And remember, it's a little bit tail heavy now. Do you want me to go up a little bit? What do you mean up a little bit? Like kind of. I don't know. Or just uh, give, like I would. Give me a good, a good straight toss. Okay. This could be the end of it. Oh boy, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Oh no, it's not bad. Woo! <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> That's exactly how it's gonna go, too. Wow! So, <laughs> I thought for sure you were gonna hit the umbrella. <laughs> no, no, it, it's definitely tail heavy. We Before we had a little insta go on the front to give it the nose weight, we went without it just to see what the SCG is. Um, Let's do one more toss with the proper nose. Yeah, that sounds like a good but idea. But you know, did you see when it recovered, how gentle it was? Yeah, yeah, it was. But, it just kind of... But Dave, <laughs> caught, Dave caught me in his office while he was working, and he brought up a point, and this just proved it was true. He's like, you got all this lift, but you got all this drag. And what's going to keep it from... I think he called it a parachute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, my, my fear is, because there's so much drag, it's going to have too much wind resistance, and when we go to launch off the end of the cliff or dock yeah. or whatever you want to call it, it's going to just kind of sit there and float down. Yep. rather than actually penetrate the air and go forward. And in doing that, it's not gonna get any more lift because it's not gonna have any air flowing over it. Keep in mind, there's four forces. You have lift, you have gravity, you have thrust, and you have drag. Without thrust, the drag is gonna be bad. And one thing I'm really good at is designing Bodhi airplanes that fly really gentle, but that's because there's a lot of lift and a lot of drag. You need that thrust. With this, it didn't have that. And we saw at the very end before it touched down, it just stopped dead and just kind of went like this. Yeah, now as, as far as making this design a flyable airplane, I think it'd be awesome. If you put a motor on the front yes. of that thing or on the back of it, it's just gonna like float through the air real smooth and slow. I agree. I agree. So what we're gonna do here is I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the CG right, we'll give it one more toss. Then I'm gonna thin out the wings. It's called a higher aspect ratio. And that's what you see on a lot of sailplanes. It's a longer, thinner wing. I'll just start incrementally thinning the wings. It's also gonna remove some of my under camber, do two things at once, because I don't think we need all the under camber. And you taught me something. Well, it's a team effort. I love it, I love it. All right, <laughs> all right let's try uh, changing CG and do it again. All right, friends, as you guys know, we love flight and we love getting people in the flight connected through the hobby here. We are really excited to let you guys know that there are a lot of new opportunities to be able to get in the hobby in a fun way, in an economical way, and also a way that you can get your friends and family involved as well. Now, if you guys haven't been to our flight test store lately, we have a whole bunch of new offerings. One of our biggest ones is the FT Easy Power Pack is now back in stock in a version two. This new power pack is stronger than ever, and this gives you the ability to fly all of our original Easy planes Plus, we're going to be adding a ton more. If you guys don't know what the Easy Power Pack is, the Easy Power Pack is a flight stabilized control board coupled with two motors and a really amazing transmitter. And our new, more powerful motors offer almost 50% more power. And along with our Easy Planes, we have a brand new offering. If you guys like planes like the Radian or even the Bixler, we have a two channel version that we just brought in called the Pterosaur. It offers flight times between 20 and 45 minutes. This aircraft is so efficient that you're actually gonna get sick of flying it before the battery runs out. Now, if you really wanna be able to get into one of our classic FT designs, but the cost of things like the transmitter, the motor, the power packs are too expensive, we're really excited to let you know that we've just brought back our Get Started packages. These Get Started packages give you everything you need from the transmitter, the airframe, the electronics, the wheels, the charger, the battery, everything. And as time goes on, we're going to be releasing more and more different guest starter packages. So please let us know what your favorite entry plane is or favorite beginner plane is so we can make that happen for you. We want to give you guys the ability and the tools to be able to enjoy flight or share it with your friends and family in a way that's inspiring, easy to do, and economical. 
Your support through watching the show and through our store is what keeps us around for now almost 14 years. And because of you, we are able to grow programs like STEM, advocacy for the hobby, and so much more. Our hope is that someday we will see many different people flying, designing, and building, and making careers out of it. And speaking of designing, I'm ready to move on to my next version of this Flutog airplane. I think we're going to be breaking some records with this one. All right, so I got all the pieces cut out for the next version of this glider here, and we are learning so much along the way. Now, if you guys have been following along with us, we have a really cool competition going on that gives you the opportunity to be able to win a skydiving experience with the Red Bull Air Force. We've had the opportunity to do this ourselves when we competed in the past, and I can promise you this, it is life-changing. Now, the goal of this competition is to challenge you guys to design the ultimate super slow, super glidey, small flyer. This can be off of our Easy Pack or Power Pack A. And we want to thank you guys ahead of time for the incredible outpouring we've had. We want to continue this competition just a little bit longer. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend the deadline all the way to the end of July. That also means that if you're coming to Flight Fest and you want to bring your favorite project, that would be the perfect time to showcase it. We would love to see it and also love to see it demonstrate. Once again, the rules and outline of this competition are listed in the link in the description below. We want to see your amazing ideas come to reality. We also want to see you skydiving with the Red Bull Air Force. And with this design, it has been an incredible evolution of learning so much. So many times I thought that high lift was the end all be all, but I'm learning so much about drag now. We've ultimately taken this from a scale design that was gonna have a four foot wing cord down to something that has a 32 inch wing cord. This design is gonna reflect that. I cannot wait to put it together. Then we're gonna take it out and fly. Yeah, you're gonna need to launch this sucker. Hey, Steven! An easy catch. I will get you. How do you throw this thing? Not easily. I would throw. <laughs> I would throw from the nose. Are you ready? Just keep in mind when you push, you may push it up. So I want to push straight. Yes. That was straight. No, it was until it hit. Ah, ah, ah. It was until it hit my hand. Oh my god. Uh, well, you That's know. Okay. We can we can rebuild. I'm Resident. gonna go back to my office. That's that when you crash before you take off. There was like he was like we're ready, and then we were. <laughs> Dang it, Lee! That's all good. It's all good, Lee. We still love you! Not okay. lying, this is not an easy thing to throw, but on a good note, it's gonna be a very easy thing to push. I like that a lot. <laughs> oh wow, that's bright. It is really bright out here. Right, left, up, down. <laughs> Are you ready? I hope. Are you guys ready? You ready, David? I'm ready. I'm nervous. All right. Three, two, one. Oh. That was kind of a bad throw. <laughs> it, it, it didn't glide very well, did it? No, it, it didn't. But it went forward pretty good. It didn't have a lot of resistance when I threw it. That That's a good sign. Is it hurt? Is it okay? That's fine. It's like a little pop where it the light. You think it's too dose heavy? I think so. Okay, let's lighten it up. All right, <laughs> so uh, we changed our design a little bit. We're gonna try yeah. this now. Yeah. And uh, you realized something too from your smaller version that you were playing with to this one now. Something I completely forgot here. Uh, you know, a lot of times when you have a yaw moment on there, you also have a torsion. And with the detail uh, wings, what will oftentimes happen is you're not only pushing it this way with it, but you're also twisting it. Well. I thought about that on the smaller size and I made the top part narrower, the bottom part fatter, so that way it's more proportionally off. When I drew the bigger version, I didn't do that, it was straight. So it's possible when I was yawing, if you notice when it was gliding, it was also twisted. Uh, what I did on this one is a little bit more, I, I narrowed at the top, made it wider at the bottom. Went conventional. One cool thing about foam board is you can always make changes, cut things apart, glue things on. Uh, we'll see how it flies. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, that's way better than it was. It still it's it's still hard. like we got a longer glide from the other version. Right. Yeah, I'm not. Do you notice that? Like the other, 
The other model we had, we had a much longer glide, didn't we? Right, way, way better. Maybe the proportions of long high aspect ratio is, is off now. Can you think? You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, Noah, we're gonna change things. <laughs> All right, so this is a good reason why we never throw away prototypes here. We're gonna go back here. Um, I think what we did is we got a little too greedy with a slippery wing. We took out too much dihedral, and it's just kind of sliding through the air in a weird way. We're going back to the original one that we had some success with. This may be the proportion that we want to blow up because it has a little bit of a wider wing cord, under cambered versus uh, flat bottom Clark Wild style, and it has the V-tail with those different rudders. So the weather is nice and calm now here. We made some adjustments. We cut this down here. We're going to throw this off the balcony. If this glides good like it did the other day, we're going to put tow release on this. We're going to tow it up. We're going to see how well it glides. Woo! Three, two, one. Oh, look at that! Oh, that would have kept going. Oh! <laughs> that was awesome! It would have kept going. <laughs> That's a winner! Holy cow! I think we found our proportions. What do you, is it broken? Hey, no, what do you say we put a tow release on it and we tow it up? All right, let's do it. Awesome. All right, so this little piece of wood, actually there's two little pieces of wood, this is our easy tow release. And what this is for is basically you can put on any kind of glider, anything you want to tow up, one servo, one piece of wire, makes it release. If you guys don't know also, we are now carrying the full line of Zap products right in our store. I'm using the medium thickness Zap CA and then the aerosol kicker. Already. All right, so we designed this thing to push off of a barge, not to be towed, so the, the game plan's kind of simple. If we have to, you're just gonna pull me up like a fish out of water, Yeah, I'm right? gonna just drag you. <laughs> yeah, just, just drag me. And then when I flip this switch, hopefully I'll do a couple from it. Uh, we're at Ready Board Runway right now. The wind's slightly crosswind no matter which one we go to, uh, but this one's nice and smooth. Uh, Mike's gonna be chasing us with Batbone V2. Uh, by the way, we got this made from PCB Way. You guys can design your own frames. You guys can bring them to reality through PCB Way. That's what we do with all of our prototypes. It's a really good, quick way to get your prototypes to become a reality. Um, are you ready? Yeah, I think we're good to go. Okay, right, left, up, down. Let's Here do it. Go. Whoa. <laughs> so far, so good. Look at that. I'm just going up. Go up. <laughs> Take me to the moon. It's like pulling a fish out of water. It's flying great, look at that. How about right there? Yep, looks good to me. All right, three, two, one, release. Oh, look at that! CG's okay. I think it's a little bit tail heavy. It's really hard to tell. Oh, he hit me. That's not very nice. He recovered. <laughs> We have the glide, but it's not really uh, pushing through the wind very fast, but there's a lot of drag to overcome. And I think maybe as we explore uh, different uh, airfoils, we'll be okay. Am I going real slow? Because it looks like I am. It is barely going down. I almost feel like I'm catching a thermal right now. Okay, I'm on the ground. Now Look how high up I still am. I, I feel like I was in a thermal <laughs> for a second. I don't know. Well, there's a lot of probably sailplane pilots that are screaming at me right now, but this thing glides incredible. And the CG is much better. You're right about where I was when I dropped you. It feels that way. So real, something really cool about that quad is we're using 1750 kV motors. Those motors are actually made to go up to six cell on a five inch. We're running seven inch three blades on a four cell and it has plenty of pop, it has plenty of power, but super efficiency. Look at that. It's, <laughs> it's just chugging along. <laughs> so look, now I'm in clean air. That, that's decent penetration too. You can see it getting bounced on the wing. Yeah. I almost feel like I could catch a thermal right over here. Look at that. Where are the clouds when you need them? I know. <laughs> Do you think this is out gliding the simple soar? It might be. I mean, it's, it's stayed up there for a long time. You gonna make it back? I don't know. I think I, I got greedy. 
Oh, so, so close. close. <laughs> Great job, buddy. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so friends, I think it is safe to say we have our solution for Flutog. And do us a big favor here. Join in the fun of designing and creating your airplane. That competition that we talked about earlier, uh, where you have a chance and an opportunity to be able to skydive with the Red Bull team, is going to be active all the way through July. We gave you a whole extra month. If you're planning on coming to Flight Fest and you have an idea in your brain that you want to bring to reality, make sure you bring it there and showcase it there because you could get an opportunity to win the whole thing. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Take care.